Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our life skill classes on BC315. Even before we could begin with our session, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, you are. Thank you. Okay, so let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and beautiful time, God. This morning, Father God, we just to praise you, just to worship you, Father God, just to come to you, Father God, to learn about life skill, Father God. And this submit uh, and this time, Father God, as we are going to learn, Father God, we submit Pastor Diana to your mighty hand, God. And Father God, as she is speaking, Father God, that words will be Lord Jesus come into our heart, come into our mind, in our lives, Father God, so that we will learn and, and through that we can equip ourselves, Father God, and help us to be, be skillful and mind, Father God. Thank you. We submit all the students to your mighty hand and everything, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Just give me a minute before I could uh, share the slide. Ma'am, you are muted. Yes. muted. Okay, thanks, Avni. I have unmuted. Okay. Okay, today we're going to discuss on money management. Okay, yeah. So what is money management? Do you think it is important? Do you think it is one of the skill that we need to learn to acquire that class? Do you think it is important for us to learn how to manage our money or do you think it is one of the skill that we need to acquire yes ma'am it is so important Christian says it is very important to manage our money how about others okay there are some chat here let me okay. Avni says yes in every aspect money is involved so it is very important okay Others, why do you think money is important? What does the scripture talk about money? We are called to be good stewards of uh, this blessing that God has given us. So yes. uh, learning how to use it in the right way is very, very important, ma'am. OK, OK, thank you. Um, one second. Ma'am, we cannot hear you. Yes. Okay. So money is a blessing. As we see that, you know, the scripture also says money is a blessing. And the scripture says that I'm the Lord who teaches you how to profit. In Isaiah 48, 17, it says that, yeah, it says that, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, that I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit who leads you by the way you should go. The scripture also says that I am the Lord who gives you the promotion. The promotion comes from the Lord. So we see that the Lord loves us to be blessed. He blesses us to be a blessing. You know, these are the words that God says that, you know, I have raised you to be a blessing. You are a blessing. So, when do you think 
that money is a root cause of all evil. Some people in the ministry say, don't talk about money because the scripture says money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Yes, thanks Rupa. The love for money is the root of all evil. So when is it wrong? Like when we say love for money, can you share some examples or share some illustration? Like what does the scripture mean by saying love for money? When when money becomes the it takes the first place in our heart, we we are we put ourselves into a lot of compromises to earn more money, become rich. And uh, Jesus warned that it is difficult for a rich man to pass through to enter the kingdom, and it's yes. easy for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Uh, he doesn't mean that uh, money is wrong, but he said when you run after it and you pursue it, forgetting everything else, and it, it takes place of God in your life probably yes thanks Avni for sharing that you just shared it to the point thanks <clears throat> that's right when money takes the place of God when money replaces God and in every area and everything that we do when we have a thought in our mind uh, saying like what's in it for me the scripture says I have blessed you for you to be a blessing if God has blessed us with finances, you know, God is expecting that. He has put that in a hand to be a good steward for us to be a blessing to others. But then if we acquire to ourselves, then that's something wrong. There's no outflow. So we need to see to it that God has blessed us with certain blessing is for us to be a blessing. And now, in this term, we're going to see how to manage the money that God has blessed us with and how we can manage that. So financial management, finance management is very, very important. Managing money is very important. It is a blessing from God himself. So let's look into that. So... Financial literacy is defined as the ability to understand and use various financial skills. These include being able to manage our money and carry out budgeting and make investments. So some figures from the World Bank suggest that only one in three people, imagine, one in three people around the world are financially literate. So the figures are far worse for women or poor people and those who are lower levels of education. So what's more is very much not only a problem here in the developing countries, but we see in America that 57% are considered to be financially literate. And how about others? This seems to be a problem. The people who are not financially literate tend to incur higher charges for loan and run up bigger debts. So meanwhile, we also see people who are better at financial planning tend to have more savings for their retirement and they are able to think better or able to manage uh, the finance in a better way by uh, investing in certain in certain assets so that they can manage the risk so in today's session on money management we aim to help us to acquire the essential skill that is needed for us to understand finance and manage our money better or effectively so being able to manage money is something people are taught and learn not something they are innately good at it is an unfortunate fact of life but a great many people or majority of us don't know how to manage their money well even during good times 
So we see in the present century, the 21st century, and will continue to demand many of the same as well as some very different approaches to manage finance. So first we will look into the budget, how to do budgeting. So the solid budget is the first step in gaining control of our finances. So budget is an estimate of our income and expense over a certain time period. So depending on their revenue cycles, most people build a bi-weekly or monthly budget. So managing our money well in the 21st century requires a good budgeting skill. Why? Why do you think it requires a skill for us to manage our budget, a monthly budget? Class, I open it to anyone in the class. You all can just unmute and answer. Why do you think that we need this uh, skill to manage our monthly budget? To handle the finances in the right way. To handle the finances in the right way so that our monthly income and our monthly expense is balanced or we, we make a point that we set aside some savings or we make sure that the expense do not exceed our monthly income. So budgeting will help us to have a control on our expense. So we can begin by using our, uh, you know, uh, using our simple Excel to make a monthly budget. We have various resources to tally and manage a monthly budget on online as well. So we need to learn about our spending, how we need to balance our spending. It all depends on our income and then how much we spend. So when our budget planning is very important because it enables us, it helps us to look at the things that are not necessarily needed. So how do you know it is not necessarily needed? When we review our budget of the previous months, for example, when you take a plus three months budget and you see the expense that you acquired and what was actually needed, what was actually was um, just an excess that was actually just a want and not a need. So if we can look into our budget and cut down on certain expenses, then that may help us to manage uh, 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 our finances better each month. It will give us a control over our budget. So we will, uh, you know, we can, uh, we will only spend on the things that we need it and we can save some things for the rainy day or a time that is much needed. So we can examine that through a bank statement or the credit card statement. When you take, uh, take a look at it for pre last three months or six months, you see how you can bring down the budget. So when you can bring down the budget, you can avoid, we can avoid or we can plan in advance well for the next year. For example, if we have parents in this class, like we need to plan ahead uh, with related to the school fees. We don't have to take a school loan to pay the fees and uh, have a, uh, you know, a monthly recurring amount which goes on to the loan. Instead, if you save up on each month, that will help you to pay your school fees. And also your monthly expenses. If you cut down on your credit card purchases, then the recurring payment would gradually reduce towards your credit card payment. And also we can take a look uh, a similar way. We can take a look at the mortgages, the auto payments and other seasonal cost. So when we find ourselves spending uh, money that we don't have, uh, we don't have to, uh, we don't need in that month. And if you can cut down the cost, you see the savings would go much bigger. 
and also uh, we can spend less on the clothing or cancelling the subscriptions that is not needed and only purchase what we really need by identifying that can fix all our unhealthy spending pattern by paying close attention to our budget so with that we can look at how we can work towards ambitious financial goals while keeping our budget in place and establishing few of the financial objectives uh, that could offer us few direction for example if you have a goal to buy a house or you set a goal to pay off your debts or you set a goal uh, to retire someday we need certain savings to handle these goals or to accomplish to reach these goals so what we need to do from now onwards we should start planning we need to have a strategy we should start making effort on how to improve our money management abilities and make such items a reality in the future so many people have um, written off by reaching may by reaching major financial milestones in their lifetime how they they have made certain plans they have developed certain strategies so how did they do that if they set a goal to buy a house to clear a debt or to have a savings for their retirement so they have certain amount in their mind so based on that amount they develop a strategy how much can i save each month small goal a big one is you know they break it down to monthly so monthly how much can we save or can we invest in the mutual funds or any other area like insurance mutual funds or i'm not too sure about the uh, trading market okay so because that is little risky um, yeah so i'm not too sure about that i i leave it to you guys but then uh, what we can be assured of is uh, yeah uh, other investments or you all can just unmute and share what can be some of the investments that we can invest for a long time goal anyone from the class one can be mutual funds one can be insurance is there any other way that we could invest on that would give us a return for to plan uh, on a uh, on a long time goal like buying a house or um, planning for your retirement or clearing your debts gold. for a future investing on gold okay anyone else real estate okay anyone else okay SIP small investment plan it can be in your mutual funds yeah that will help us every month when you put in some amount that amount will start to grow yes anyone else okay. uh, we can give us good it is uh, valid or I mean if it would be fixed deposit okay insurance okay you can invest on yourself to upgrade your skill that can also increase the financial uh, that's beautiful thank you thank you shri kumar yes invest on a learning skills which is also an investment okay next anyone else purchase of yes children's education good okay so the class is aware on what are the various terms that one could invest on to plan their uh, long-term goals to reach their long-term goals so the first step would be to open a savings account that we could start to save for a down payment on purchasing a house or contributing to a 
pension to prepare for retirement might result in a significant payout later in our life. So similarly, when we start saving in a small way and aiming it to pay off our debt might help us achieve our major goals. So when we have a debt, at the same time you have a goal. So what is the best thing to do? Can anyone in the class share? Is it good for us to clear our debt or reach our goal first? Like buying a house, saving up for your retirement, keep the debt aside uh, pending? Or is it good for us to clear our debts and then focus or concentrate on these long-term goals? Clear our debts, ma'am. Yes. And also, biblically also, we have to first clear what we owe before we plan anything. Yes, yes. Thanks, Rupa, for sharing that. Very right. The scripture says, do not hold on to any kind of debt, even for a night. Or do not hold on to the wages of a person for a night. So when we talk about debt, it's a big debt that we would have acquired for any kind of purpose. Okay, but it is very good thing for us to clear our debts because in Deuteronomy 28, it says you will be a lender, not a borrower. So God wants his children to be out of debt. So what we need to do, we need to aggressively see to it that we clear our debts first because goals and our, uh, you know, goals can increase needs will definitely increase, wants will definitely increase. But what we need to focus more is on clear your debts. Clear your debts so that you can pay off, so that you will avoid on cutting down on the interest rate. The more you delay on paying off, the more it will the amount will just increase or shoot high because uh, the fin uh, the uh, the finance management this is how it works they add interest to an interest every delay in payment or every late payment will have certain charges and remember the interest will be charged on the actual amount on the capital amount plus on the late payment charges that's when it gives you a big picture so to avoid that, it is good for us to aggressively clear your debts and then focus on reaching your goals first. So that would be a blessing. And God is a God who will help us to clear our debts. When we pray, he will, he will teach us how to manage our finances well. And also he helps us to profit in the work that we do. So how to manage a personal finance so we'll go over some of the basic uh, of how to succeed in personal financial management in the times that we are living in today so the first thing that we can look at is look at is what does personal financial management involves so at a very basic level the personal financial management simply means gaining an understanding of a financial situation in order to make the most of our assets in day-to-day -day life and in planning for our future. So one thing for us to keep in mind is that assets might equate to more or less depending on where we live. And based on the cost of living, so the cost of living is basically the amount of money necessary to cover the basic living expense, such as it could be food, housing, commuting, and even it can be towards a health care. So seeing as how the family uh, home we live in or the health saving account that we fund regularly uh, uh, fall under our basic living expense, or the cost of living becomes significantly more important to us. So it all depends on the place where we stay, on the city or state, uh, the, the place where we live in. So, but to many, all this really means is that you should watch what you spend and save what you're 
able to even if it is small amount it will go long way later So to gain more appropriate uh, basic understanding for all uh, 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 on uh, financial success, we I thought we will dis discuss on the 10 reasons why financial planning is more important. So one is our income. One is our income. So we need to analyze uh, our income to know how much that we have to put towards basic expense uh, towards towards different areas that are uh, that's why we plan our budget what are the areas that we need to spend on monthly basis so we will have an idea when we plan our budget and we need to see a cash flow the second is the cash flow how managing spending and planning ahead to make the most of our income and the third we look at is capital so having this leftover cash as a result of managing the cash flow. The fourth, we see it as a family security. So we need to understand the need to address providing for and keeping a family safe. How? We can invest in the insurance or any other means. Like we can also invest on the educational funds so that we don't have to struggle and a family is secure during the time of basic needs the fifth point i would like to make sure to look into is the investment very important investment can be small or big depending on what we earn but we need to make a point to invest even if it is a small amount So making a plan to help, you know, the money grow, the small investment grow over time is all depends on how much we can invest every month into any of the area. It can be an insurance, it can be on mutual funds, it can be in any kind of SIPs where recurringly monthly you put your small savings into and expect that money to grow on a longer run. It can also be investing on some of the share trades on a longer basis. I'm not talking about the intraday, that is the daily trading, where you know most of them say that you know it is the big loss to invest on intraday trading, but then on a long investment, on a long time, we can invest money on. The sixth point I would like to discuss here is standard of living standard of living guaranteeing the most possible comfort due to prudent financial planning see what is the need and what is your want and based on that you have a good you can plan a good standard of living now the seventh point i would like to share here is financial understanding it's very important for us to understand our budget so making use of our own decisions and result to better understand what works in a finance management plan what works for us in a budget we need to look into it understand so how do you understand and look into it yes take a list of your budget for last three months or six months when you review them month by month you would know where you spent extra what was your need and what was just a want and what are the things that you can just skip off or stop investing on and that way we can manage our finance better and start saving that small amount into your put that amount into your savings so that your money can grow the eighth point I would like to uh, address here is assets. Acquiring valuable assets or investing on them with low risk and limited liability will help us on a long term. We had some of us share in the class investing on the real estate, investing on the gold. It can be small amount, 
but investing on them on a long time you see you're acquiring the sets at the time of emergency those assets will come in need so it is very important for us to acquire assets well savings having emergency cash on hand or stored in a high liquidity investment is very important very important emergency cash keep aside according to what you feel would be enough as an emergency need for an emergency need so that we don't have to look out for some dns and the tenth one is ongoing advice we need to uh, establish a relationship with a financial planning expert set ourselves strong in uh, set ourselves strong in decision making towards financial planning so we need sometimes uh, you know if we are not able to plan or decide on certain things it is always good for us to take help from somebody who is expert in financial planning so that we can plan our budget well and see to it how we can grow in the finance that has been assigned to us so some of these ideas would involve uh, the same specific types of financial management or managing money uh, so the important is we need to take step there's a lot of resource available online there are a lot of books available online we have uh, many CAs around us but what is needed here is we need to take that first initiative to step out and seek for some kind of financial advice and then start planning accordingly let not uh, you know keep aside these things oh my savings are very small so what will i do with that just like the guy who came to jesus when uh, when jesus gave each one he, he illustrated like you know uh, uh, he gave each one a certain talent amount right one five one ten and for the other one each one you know multiplied it in their own way but the guy who received one talent just buried it in the ground but he was questioned for doing that very act instead of uh, instead of investing them in a bank so it does not depend how much or how little are saving that we could uh, be left out with a small amount of saving but what i encourage each one of us in the class is invest that amount into something now there's a simple saving account that's come up there are many agencies in india like cam or mutual funds or sips there are many where you can invest that small amount in sip and we can expect even that small amount to grow eventually in time so what is recommended and what is encouraged in this class is no matter how big or how small your amount is keep it for the rainy day keep it uh, uh key uh, put it into the savings and you know and um, look into your budget cut down on the unnecessary expenses that uh, you know takes off your time your money when we cut down and you see you can increase your saving and put that saving amount into some kind of investment plan where you will make your money grow okay even without you working for it you make sure that your money grows while you concentrate on your ministry while you concentrate on your business while you concentrate on your work the other side a small amount that you put towards the saving or investment we allow it to grow so with that we end this class and i will open it for our class to just unmute and share what are the different ways that we could manage money and save so class please go ahead i'm sure most of you all are in workplace uh, businesses so i would request you all what worked well if you can just unmute and share what worked well what are the different ways that one can manage uh, uh, money and save for a better future please go ahead open up to the class Anyone from the class? 
रूपा अवनी श्री कुमार प्लीज गो हेड प्रभाकर प्लीज अनम्यूट एंड शेयर योर थॉट शेयर योर व्यूज हाउ वी कैन सेव और प्लान आर फाइनेंस वेल Oh, yes, Pastor. Uh, actually, it depends on uh, the amount of income we are generating per month. One of the things, because um, uh, Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors, said once, like uh, most of the people save whatever is left after spending, but he says you fix the amount first, uh, how much you want to save, and then spend the remaining one. So that was his key for financial planning and in, in uh, saving. So he created wealth by you know uh, fixing its uh, you know spending amount and and saving most of the most of his uh, capitals uh, in uh, in the area of investment or stocks, purchases of lands or gold, whatever things. So it created uh, his wealth, but. uh in some scenarios like it differs from person to person how much he is earning and how many members dependent on him and how well like uh, how much is monthly expenditures revolves around so sometimes it, it might not be possible all the time to you know fix our saving plan um and maximize the saving and minimize the cost of uh, uh expenditure because as the inflation rate increases the costing of products and services also increases sometimes yes so yeah so we need to you know be flexible between those things so if we focus on more on saving and less on spending then automatically we can save more for our future that's my view of course thank you thank you prabhaka that was well said thank you for sharing that input yes i see say had been raised yes say please go ahead you can unmute Yes, thank you, Pastor. Um, so, um, how can we manage our finances? Um, number one, I think it's important to um, track where we're spending our money. Um, it will surprise us the little things that take our money that could actually be saved up. For instance, some people could always be buying coffee every morning on their way to work. Whereas just making your coffee at home would save you a lot of money. Uh, some people buy lunch or breakfast on their way to work. Whereas just actually cooking your meals <laughs> would save a lot. So looking for all those holes that take your money, I think is important. And then number two, if you're not disciplined to put out money uh, for saving, it's best you automate. um automate your uh automated basically automate your savings in, in sense whereby uh, you could agree with the bank or on your e platform there could be a certain percentage that always taken out once you pay so that way um you you're not um how will i put it it's not on you if you're not disciplined to take out money it's, it's just automatically being taken away and put into an account that you can't touch right so that would be a good way and then um another thing again is people should learn to pay themselves and when i mean pay themselves in other words um after you have tied given your tithe and or your offerings you have taken all that it's important that money is set aside for the future um because while we work This is the active time of our lives. A time will come when we would have to leave the job market, and we would have to be on our own. So, all that we have earned in the active years of our life is what we would we would be using in that time when we're all retired. So, it's important that we take that seriously in ensuring that we pay ourselves. We pay ourselves for the future. We pay ourselves and not spend all that we get. um well, all that we have paid uh, from our work baby and just that uh, just just few points i have in addition to all that said. very helpful say thank you so much for sharing 
um, yes, we learn to be disciplined. Discipline is very much needed when it comes to saving. Um, yes, from what Prabhakar shared to what Sayi said is something very important that we need to do is when we set a recurring into our account, so we don't have to set aside the money, but then if you set something recurring uh, that uh, gets cut down from your uh, bank automatically through the e platform, so there is a continuous saving that is happening from your monthly salary, from your monthly income. There's an amount that gets automatically cut, goes towards your saving account, which you will not be touching it yeah that is one of the way that we could plan our savings for our future thank you prabhaka thank you say so in that way whatever is the balance left is what we will be planning our monthly budget on yeah so that we have a discipline towards saving anyone else can i pass yes please i just want to uh, uh, just share some few ideas I believe that uh, you know uh, that saving uh, is a discipline which we have to make at least a 10% of our saving as we are giving our 10% as a tithe. The same way, the 10% minimum we should have a discipline of saving. And second thing, I also believe that it's not only saving, but we should also learn how to how to how to how to you know increase that money. It's like uh, you know, as long as it is saving, it is there only. But also we have to learn, um, like as you said about the uh, financial literacy part. So we should also learn that um, because nowadays the things are so advanced. So there are so many opportunities, so many platforms are there. So we should also learn that how to how to increase that wealth which we have saved, so that uh, at the time of our retirement, uh, you know, we or uh, you know, if you want to give something to your grandchildren or children, so you should have sufficient in your uh, in your like, in your hands. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sri Kumar, for sharing that. Yes, it is very important for us to save that we can, you know, be a blessing to our children and grandchildren, isn't it? That's what in the book of Isaiah it says, a God is a God who blesses us and he makes us a blessing where we'll be a blessing to our children and to our grandchildren. Thank you so much for bringing that to my notice. Yes. Yes, our God is a God. You know, He will enable us when we pray and when we seek for strategies. He will enable us to plan the wealth to acquire and make it a blessing to our generation to come. Yes, thanks. Yeah, but then that should not become a priority in our task, right? Yeah, that's when Rupa was sharing the love of money will turn into a root of all evil so that should not be our main focus but whatever the little savings that we tend to save when we do it in the right way that pleases god a god is a god who blesses that and he can multiply that where that small saving in turn can be a blessing to your generation to come okay we need to believe in that and do things that pleases god thanks Shri kumar anyone else we have seven minutes left. If there's any one would like to share, please go ahead. There's so much learning in our class when we open it up. Kennedy, Avni, Rupa, anyone from our class? Siddhant, Abhinash. Yes, Brother Christopher, please unmute and you can go ahead. Hi, yes, uh, so Pastor, I think uh, the um, uh, the parable of the um, of the talents uh, comes to mind, yes. and um, it's, it's where you know we um, uh, you know we have received we received uh, you know talents, uh, and in the sense you know and we receive uh, you know we have we get monetary. Uh, 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 you know, compensated for work that we do, how we invest it, uh, and uh, you know what is the, what is the best way to do it, so that uh, you know it multiplies rather than just remains in a in a you know in maybe buried in, in the ground. So that that's what comes to mind. Uh, we cannot just keep it you know in uh, 
in in uh, in the in a, in a locker in the house, but we have to invest it and uh, multiple have it multiplied. So in the case of the talents, um, one person got five and he made it ten, and one person got two and he got made it four. The third one just went and buried it in the, in the ground. And um, uh, I think the same way, uh, you know, when we have uh, when we earn money uh, and uh, we have some savings, we have to be able to invest it rather than just keep it, you know, in, uh, in the ground. Yeah. So just thought I'd mention that. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Christopher. It's very important to save. I was mute. OK, thank you so much. So anyone else in our class would like to unmute and share? Tarun, Subhajit. I know you have a lot of experience in finances. Tarun, would you like to share? Or Subhajit, anyone? So can I share one? Yes, please. Uh, just uh, an honest confession. I'm I, I'm not into too much of financial planning because my husband takes over that and he does it his way. But one example that I would like to share, like my life experiences, like we were two years married and my husband was uh, working alone, but we were paying a huge rent in the house. So we both were like... Uh, every month feeling like around 45 percent of our salary would go in the rent so we just thought why not invest in a house of our own where you know we can pay the same amount as an emi so uh, we started searching and a uh, lot provided us that amount and we could you know in the second third year of our marriage we we bought a small house two bedroom house uh, of course, it was a tough time because we were uh, far away from office and th there was commutation problems uh, with my husband, but he took it very uh, positively and he took the challenge and somehow then we bought this house and we were happy about it and it's still with us. God has increased the you know blessing. We've lived in that house for years and years and seen good days there. So I uh, I only know that uh, we just thought this one thought instead of you know giving a rent and we are getting nothing back out of it. If this a little more, if we invest and we buy a house and if we pay the EMI and then we uh, made sure that we completed the loan amount much earlier than the uh, due time as and when we used to get money and we got it uh, free freed from EMIs and debt uh, much earlier. And really, we had uh, experienced the blessings of God because there were times when even there were there was a time when my husband did not have a job. So we those overheads were, uh, you know, um, much controlled because we didn't have to pay huge rents and, you know, many other things that we needed were sorted out because we were in our own house, which was debt free. And we did not have the burden of EMI on our and we could go through it. So this is what I remember about my own life. So I just wanted to share this as an example, uh, how Lord led us to do that in such an young age, early age, we thought of it and God blessed us. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks, Avni, for sharing that wonderful experience. Actually, that makes a lot of sense, isn't it? We can pay the same amount what we pay for rent uh, through EMI. And at the end of the day, you get that property for your own. And uh, the scripture also says it's the Lord is the one who blesses you with house. You know, he is the one who gives you a place to share, stay, is the shelter. So that's really nice. As she was sharing, I was just remembered of this one proverb. It says, big door opens on small hinges. So in the same way, a big door swings on much small hinges. So what is the very important here is the choices and the decision one makes in life which can produce in turn much larger outcome. So the choice that Avni made back then, 
you know, from staying in a rented flat. It may be a much bigger flat that she would stay in. But then she looked at the rent. 45% of her income is going towards the rent, which in turn she gets nothing, no profit. The profit is just the luxury stay that you get. But then she was ready to compromise on that and go more, more off to a 2BHK, where at the end of the day, you're getting that property for your own. So the small choice, the decisions that we make on a larger run, the results may be good. Thank you so much, Avni, for sharing this. I'm sure it will be a blessing to many of us in the class and later who listen to it. Anyone else? I saw somebody's hand been raised. Is there anyone who would like to share? Yes, Subhajit, please go ahead. That would be the last person after which we will close with a word of prayer. Yes, please. I'm sorry I didn't uh, respond at that time. So uh, I always yeah. have uh, followed a simple example, biblical example of giving tithes mm -hmm. and staying honest to people in God. And uh, uh, whenever, uh, whenever it comes to financial planning, it's a bit difficult thing for me mm -hmm. because uh, but ma'am, I have seen that I, I haven't done much planning in every in in this area. I never do that. I simply uh, stick to giving tithes and offerings and uh, and staying honest to people, which sometimes becomes very hard to do. Staying honest to God and people, like sometimes when we uh, by doing some extra project work, if we get some money, it becomes very. If it is a big amount, giving offering of that money sometimes becomes very tough for me because because the flesh doesn't want to do that but simply following these examples i have seen great blessing in my life and even in our ministry also uh, we have a small ministry uh, but even in our ministry we follow this example of giving and uh, simply by giving to other helping other ministries other churches we have seen a, a lot of blessing we have never been in debt and never been in any kind of blackness that's Praise the only God. financial planning I can do. Yeah. Thanks, Subhajit, for sharing. Last but not least, I feel that's the very important thing. That's what we read in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, which says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And only in this area we see God telling us, Test me in this. You know, he says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. If God says, test me, you know, many times we'll have an idea, hey, listen, why are you putting such a big amount into tithe? There are other people who will be tithing. Instead, give that tithe to some other ministry leaders or give it to somewhere else. But yeah, that should be an offering. But what the Lord says, the first fruit of your income, bring it to the Lord. Give that tithe to the house of the Lord. When we do that on a regular basis, we see the Lord keeps his word of what he has promised. He is saying he will throw open the floodgates of heaven and he will bless us in such a way that we do not have enough room to store it. You see this, uh, you know, I just remember this parable uh, of feeding the 5,000 or later even the 7,000. There was no time that God provided enough just exactly enough. You needed to feed 5,000. Here I have provided 5,000. No, the parable did not, does not say so. Or for 7,000, exactly 7,000. No, it says I have provided, just like Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what one could think, imagine, or even ask for. That is how our God is. He blesses us beyond what we can. One thing we need to remember as we talk about money, finance, and also investing on skills, somebody said, we need to remember the wisdom comes from God for each of us. 
as we see in Isaiah 48, 17 or Deuteronomy 8, 18, in Isaiah 48, 17, he says, the Lord is the one who teaches us to profit. You see, the wisdom comes from God. And also in Deuteronomy 8, 18, he says, he gives the power for us to get wealth. So everything comes from God. So whatever we give to God, the 10% is not from our money or our income, but what gives us, we are just giving it what he has given us. Or we are, we are giving to God what he has blessed us with. So there's nothing that we could take credit for. But in every area, like the scripture says, we need to pay our gratitude. We need to be thankful to God for every blessing that he is blessing us with. And I feel when we have that heart of gratitude, that in turn will be a channel of blessing. That itself is a, um, a key to open the blessing to receive from God. So with that, we will end the session and end the class with a word of prayer. Father, we come into your presence with heart of thanks and praise. Thank you for the session week after week, Lord, where you are instilling us, you are developing us with new skills that is needed in our life, in our ministry, at our workplace, at our business. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will bless us and increase us in your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may do the things that may be pleasing to you, oh Father. Lord, I lift up you each and each of us in this class and the students who join us uh, on e-learning and later who watches the sessions, Lord. I pray that, Father, you will bless each one of them to be a channel of your blessing. You Thank you, Lord, that you have called each of us to be a blessing in turn to many, oh, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your hand upon each one of us. Thank you that you have increased us in your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. God bless. See you all next week. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.